the dimension. The uh, we've lost tell your a sound. few things. I'm sorry. We lost yeah. your sound for a second. If you could start again, uh, please, that'd be great. Um. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So I was just uh, saying that um, uh, before going into the, the understanding of dimensions, uh, let me give a brief introduction about myself. So as you mentioned that uh, my name is Dalbert and uh, I'm working as a senior functional consultant with IBM India. And uh, I'm holding uh, a total of uh, eight years of experience as a functional consultant and um, uh, on the Navision or Business Central, uh, I have been working on this product since last five years. All right. OK, so now let me take you through the agenda for today. OK, so uh, today we are going to discuss uh, about uh, quite a few things about dimensions. So in today's ad agenda, we will have introduction to dimension then. Um, um, how we can uh, create and set up the dimensions and the dimension values. Then uh, what are the types of dimensions that we have uh, that we can set up in Business Central? Uh, then uh, how we can, uh, there is a specific process called changing of uh, global dimensions if needed. So that I will explain. Uh, the next point would be uh, about the default dimensions, how, how we can set up them uh, how uh, some of the validations uh, they, that apply to uh, apply in the system for uh, defining the default dimensions and the effect of the same on the transactions. Then we'll move to um, the dimension combinations. And uh, uh, lastly, it will be a dimension corrections, uh, which is uh, a new, um, uh, we can say an enhancement that has been introduced in uh, Business Central. Okay, there is another point uh, with respect to what we call the conflicting dimensions. So that that also, um, you know, uh, we will try to cover it, but uh, let us see if time permits, right? So this is uh, the today's ag agenda. Now, if we talk about the dimensions, uh, if, I, if I were to create a definition for what a dimension is, so it would be simply an attribute or a value, okay, that, that categorizes the entries for tracking and analyzing uh... Oh there, it looks like so we've lost the val. We may have lost the val, guys, so let's just see if we can get back the val. Let me message him. Um, hello. Hi, Deval. We lost you there. Um, um, yeah. yeah, we lost you there for about 30 seconds. My apologies for that. Uh, let me share my screen quickly. Thank you, Deval. And, and just for everyone, a reminder for everyone that this is a global event. So we've got people joining from all around the world to make this event happen. Um, so we've got people from all around the world. Internet is not the best in some places. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for their patience. And Deval, thank you once again. Um, so yeah, over back to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Raz. Okay, so uh, people, as I was explaining, um, so if we were to create the definition for di dimensions, then we would say that dimensions is an attribute or a value that categorizes the entries uh, for tracking and analyzing, analyzing in future. Okay. Uh, there is there is another uh, definition that we can put that it is a type of information that we can associate with each entry so that that can be used to uh, you know uh, 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 get some some of the analytical data in future uh, based on uh, whatever the transactions that we have posted in our business central application so i have put uh, a small example over here as well so let's say uh, i i want to create a purchase transaction and I want to take additional information to that purchase transaction. So what I can do, um, I want to have a department to be associated, department information to be associated when I'm creating a purchase transaction. Okay, so let's say I'm creating a, a purchase for my different different uh, uh, departments on different different dates. So whenever I'm creating a transaction, whenever I'm creating a purchase, I want to take that, okay, this purchase has been made for my 
X department. This purchase has been made for my Y department. Let's say for uh, marketing department, uh, I, we have created a uh, transaction. Likewise, we have created some uh, transaction for our purchase department as well. So whatever the categorization or the additional attributes that we are providing along with our transactions that we can set up using the dimensions okay so a diamond uh, a department dimension can be set up when a cost controller wants to analyze the expenses per department this is quite simple now um, if it is uh, creating somewhat conf confusion to some people uh, i'll create uh, i'll give you an example of uh, our um, um, uh, current world okay so uh, uh, you just consider that uh, most of you must be using um, uh, you know the social media platforms right so you can consider this type of uh, additional information as a hashtag Okay, so I have created this example over here. So you can just correlate it with a hashtag. Like um, if I'm creating or using this hashtag as hashtag Dynamics 365 Business Central. Okay, and if if I'm using this hashtag on my LinkedIn uh, social social media platform, if I'm searching uh, some of the, uh, if I want to search for these uh, feeds or uh, posts that have been uh, created using this uh, particular hashtag, then I can just uh, click on this hashtag and uh, the application will give me all the posts that are uh, that are created using this particular hashtag. That is the hashtag Dynamics 365 Business Center, right? So it is the similar way we can use the dimensions in our Business Center application. So this is the very basic definition of um, how we can create uh, how we can use the dimension to create additional and to store the additional information with our different transactions okay now uh, the next thing is that we can definitely create and use these dimensions but what is the use of it so as i explained we can use this information uh, in future whenever we want some uh, uh, some data or the information that is uh, created in our business central uh, uh, application uh, with, with the transaction. So based on the different different types of dimensions and categories, um, the stakeholders of the company can have the analysis and they can uh, take the different types of strategic decisions based on that. Okay. So uh, these, uh, this is the basic information on uh, uh, how to define a dimension. Now, if you take uh, go to the next slide, uh, here I have mentioned some of the points that why we should use the dimensions. Okay, in Business Central, uh, why should we use the dimension? So the first point is that um, it allows us to have additional input fields on our uh, documents or journals. So let's say let's take an example that um, if our client asks us that I want a field which, which, which should be having three different options, okay, that I, I should be able to select at the time of creating that particular transaction. So the simplest way would be that, okay, if it is not available out of the box in our business central system, then we need to customize it, right? So a field needs to be created. We need to uh, take a help from uh, a technical guy to create uh, a new field and uh, give uh, uh, some of the options. And then we need to uh, ask the client as well to, that okay the the field has been created over here but uh, at uh, uh, what different places in the whole application do we need this uh, information uh, to be flown uh, across the transaction so instead of doing that what we can do we can just simply create a dimension okay and we can select the different different uh, values uh, to be associated with that newly created dimension and that dimension can be uh, associated when we are creating our transaction so this is the simpler way so instead of uh, going for customizations uh, we should use this uh, the functionality of dimension okay now second point that i already explained uh, uh, earlier that additional parameters uh, will be available for financial analysis so whenever we are using different types of uh, dimensions and uh, tagging uh, tagging the values with those dimensions they will be available they will be flown uh, along with the transaction uh, to all the different entries and uh, in future whenever the stakeholders want the financial analysis information they want to take it they can say uh, they can definitely uh, uh, get the information from the system and the third one 
that is also a very important feature that can be uh, uh, for which we, we should use the dimensions which can um, you know reduce the size of our chart of account so that that is a very very important feature that can be um, uh, that can be used uh, with dimensions so uh, in in legacy systems or previously uh, when uh, we used to have uh, uh, the financial accounting system uh, usually whenever the companies wanted that okay they wanted uh, the transactions to be tagged or associated for different different let's say departments uh, okay so at that time they used to create different different gls and uh, post the transactions so that they would be uh, having uh, the in uh, the information that has been associated with those transactions based on the different gl accounts uh, created and, and based on that they would um, use uh, they would uh, do the analysis for the same but instead of that we can just create a single uh, gl account let's say an expense account okay and that is associated with three different departments for example so instead of creating three different gl accounts we can just create one dimension and create three different uh, dimension values and take this dimension value at the time of creating that transaction so by using the dimensions we can reduce the length of our chart of account as well right so these these three are the uh, three main main uh, advantages uh, of uh, why uh, we should be using the dimensions in the system right okay moving on to the next point that is how uh, or what are the dimension values okay so let's say for example as i have been uh, explaining you uh, from the beginning that uh, a dimension uh, a department for me would be a dimension and as diamond uh, as department i have three uh, different different departments in my company so i can create a diamond uh, create a dimension called the department and in the dimension value i can select three different values as finance department purchase department and the sales department all right so this is how dimensions and dimension values should be created and to be used in the system now uh, this is this is all theory that i i just explained to you now let us let us go to the business central and uh, let me explain to you how we can create uh, the dimensions and the values actually in the system okay so this is my uh, uh, my home page for my business central now i can just go to tell me and i can type dimensions okay so this is the parent master that is dimension so uh, since this is a cronus database uh, we have uh, some uh, sample data already available in the system okay so uh, these these are some of the fields uh, which are available uh, for creating the dimension master okay so let me just br briefly explain to you how uh, and what are the uses of these fields so the first field is code uh, second one is name then third one is code caption fourth one is co uh, filter caption fifth one is description and the blocked one the last one is blocked okay so as as we have uh, uh, the any in any any masters that we create in our business central these two fields are always there code and master okay so if i want to create a new dimension code then how will i create i'll just simply click on new and if let's say i'm creating a test dimension so the code i will put and i'll tab it uh, i'll uh, push a tab and you notice over here the name the code the code caption and the filter caption these three fields are uh, uh, are populated automatically right so uh, and this these three fields are uh, you know they are editable so we can put any value but by default system uh, just creates the, and populates automatically so the code uh, uh, the name uh, is uh, populated with the same value as code and uh, in the code caption and filter caption system just con concatenates is its type of field that is uh, the code caption and the filter caption like this one we can definitely change it so here instead of code we can push uh, we can uh, set the value as uh, code test code for purchase like that okay similarly we can provide the filter as well 
filter caption as well for purchase right so this is how it uh, it gets created and uh, we can definitely change the value of this field and this uh, the description field now this description field does not have any impact while we are using this dimension uh, across the system okay this is just uh, just to have uh, an uh, additional information on why this uh, dimension has been created let's say for example so uh, we can provide a purpose of why we are creating a particular dimension so we can just put it at this okay this dimension uh, created for let's say purchase entries we can put any any description over here right and the last one is the blocked field okay so if we are enabling this field over here then what system will do system will uh, restrict the user to use this particular dimension at the time of creating the transaction so this is a simple logic behind it okay so this is how we create the dimension okay now after creating the dimension we need to provide certain uh, values to this dimension that can be used along with the uh, transaction so let's say we are we were checking the example of department uh, we have been discussing this uh, with the example of department only so which is already created over here over here so if i want to set the values for a particular dimension i can go to the dimension action and i can select the dimension values so over here uh again we have a few fields i'll explain to you how how these fields work and uh, what are what is the significance of these fields so again it is a code and a name so for a department we have three departments created over here let's say admin production and sales right so these are the codes the name right now the dimension type now this is a field which is very similar to what we have uh, for our chart of accounts so if uh, if you have worked on the chart of accounts you must be knowing that uh, on the chart of accounts we have the similar options uh, for the type instead of standard there in the chart of account we have the type posting okay so what uh, whichever is the lowest level of the hierarchy in our uh, uh, chart of account or the dimension list whichever is the lowest level would be associated with each and every transaction so uh the lowest level is considered to be the standards which is directly tagged to the individual uh, uh, even on the chart of account as well we are always using the posting type of accounts then we have the heading total begin total and end total so this these four are used for grouping all the uh, all the set of dimension values that we have created or we have already created right so uh, based on the begin total and end total system will have a certain amount of Uh, totaling as well which is our next field so in terms of totaling uh, system creates and uh, uses the list of all the uh, different dimension values while uh, uh, considering the end total now if i go back from here to the area dimension let's say and uh, i'll show you how the grouping structure can be defined a uh, hierarchical structure what we can say that can be defined so if you notice over here this is a similar structure to what we have in our chart of accounts right so like we have in our chart of accounts this is the begin total uh, again this is a begin total europe north and under which we have created two standard dimensions uh, europe north uh, europe north uh, non eu and eu right and uh, we have the end total and if you notice over here on the totaling tab uh, on the totaling field um, the values uh, uh, the value has been defined uh, to be associated uh, to total all the uh, well all the values from this uh, dimension code from 20 to 45 right so this is how we can create a full hierarchical structure for uh, our uh, dimensions and uh, use it uh, accordingly right so uh i'll show you there is there is another uh, uh, you know utilization or uh, uh, an action that is available over here uh, i'll show you so if i go to action and under action uh, un under function uh, tab we have uh, 
the indent dimension value section and second is the where use list so these two actions are also similar to what we have in our uh, chart of account uh, uh, chart of account entity as well okay so again these two uh, actions also have this uh, uh, the same uh, behavior what we have for our chart of account so i will not go into details of this thing but uh, uh, you just need to understand that however we create our chart of accounts similarly uh, we can create our dimension values and uh, uh, the values are indented using this uh, indent dimension value action and uh, uh, the indent dimension value action what it does is that it indents the uh, values of the created dimension values in a hierarchical structure so one level is increased for e each type of grouping and the standard dimension that we value that we have created and also simultaneously it also creates the totaling field value automatically based on the begin total and end total grouping and the set that it receives okay so based on that it uh, just creates it i'll just uh, quickly give you an example of how it works so if i just copy it and uh, go back to my newly created dimension let's say and if i go to dimension then the dimension value okay so now you see over here uh, it is not in a proper hierarchical structure right so uh, let me just remove these values and i can just go to action functions and indent dimension values so this is a warning message that okay system will be uh, uh, considering the begin total and end total and uh, will uh, create the hierarchical structure so i'll press yes so you see this is how it gets created and uh, the where use is also as i mentioned that uh, it is uh, it has the same application as, as we have for our uh, chart of account as well okay so this is the first step of how we create our dimension and uh, just uh, set the different types of dimension values to it okay now Uh, the next step would be okay that we have created a dimension and we have selected a value now what is the utilization of creating this master right so uh, i'll show you how it can be used along with the transaction okay so that would be the next step so i can go to uh, let's say a purchase order okay so this is a purchase order and uh, if i go to any existing purchase order okay so this is my purchase order document now uh, as i explained earlier that we want to tag certain additional information with our transaction okay so let's say i want to tag some new dimension value to my transaction so there there are different places on a particular document uh, from where we can um, associate our dimension values to a particular document or a journal okay so the first uh, place uh, is to set the dimension values from header okay so to set up the value on the header we can go to the order action and from order action we can go to the dimensions okay so as you can see over here since this is an uh, uh, existing transaction there are certain uh, um, the dimension where uh, values defined over here already okay now if i want to create another value i can just simply click on the next line and i can select the dimension let's say i want to add a purchaser right so so i'll select the dimension as purchaser and along with that i can select a particular value right so let's say it is selected as marty horst so this is the value that i i selected so i have successfully associated one parameter one additional attribute to my transaction so i can in future i can have an 
analysis uh, uh, or the reporting that can be used based on the purchaser okay so if i want to check how many transaction and what types of transaction what all transactions have been created using the purchaser code multi host so for that i can just simply tag this value right and if i click close so system will give us a confirmation message that uh, you have changed a dimension do you want to update the lines now why is it asking for us to uh, change the value on the uh, value of the dimension of the lines because the dimensions are going to be flown as i explained earlier they are going to be flown along with different different ledger entries that uh, that are going to be created along with the posting so uh, it will be gen general ledger entries it will be item ledger entries it will be vendor ledger entries and so on so system is flowing to these uh, all attributes along with all the ledger entries and based on those ledger entries only in future we can get the analytical reports okay so i'll press yes over here so this is the uh, first part how we can tag our dimension to the header now uh, as the system shown us that uh, uh, you want to change the value on the lines so we can check the value on the lines as well so i can go to um, so i can go to lines more option then in the line functions i have the dimensions so if i check over here here also system has updated the purchaser dimension so this is going to be flown uh, along with the uh, item ledger entry as well so this is how we can define and based on the selected dimension from the header system will update the value uh, on the lines as well and uh, on on the posting of that particular transaction it will be flown to the um, the uh, dedicated ledger entries right now <clears throat> this is this is the part how we can manually uh, uh, select and uh, uh, you know tag the dimensions uh, to our header and the line of the uh, transaction or a document type of transactions okay now uh, there is there is another concept uh, that is called uh, the global dimension and the shortcut dimension so along with the dimensions we have this uh, additional categorization of uh, types of dimensions that we have now when we talk about the types of dimensions uh, so that is that is our next point uh, that uh, we would uh, discuss uh, in the in our session so uh, uh, if i go back to the agenda page so the dimension values and its utilization on the document that we already already saw now the next is the types of dimensions now uh, let me explain the um, you know for some people there is um, there is a confusion of uh, um, how many dimensions can be created how many types of dimensions can be created so let me simplify uh, for all of you uh, if you already know then uh, very good but if somebody is uh, does not know this thing then the number of dimensions and the num uh, number of dimensions values that we can create uh, in our business central system that is unlimited that n number of dimensions and n number of values can be um, uh, can be created but if we want that some of the dimensions need uh, to be uh, selected by default and need to be flown uh, along with the transactions so so for that uh, we have uh, uh, we have to define uh, certain limited fields for that so let's say for example if a company says that okay we have so many kinds of uh, so many kinds of uh, different different uh, additional parameters that we want to be uh, to be um, you know uh, stored along with the transactions let's say uh, a 30 40 types of uh, different different uh, values and parameters that we want to uh, sh uh, want to store with the transactions but we need to understand that okay out of this 30 uh, or 40 fields what are some of the 
some of the critical fields or critical parameters that we want along with the uh, transaction and that those fields or values need to be available whenever we are uh, whenever we are uh, seeing the transaction or creating the transaction so at that time we get this concept of uh, global and the shortcut dimension okay so uh, what are global dimensions what are shortcut dimensions i'll show you uh, in the in the business central but uh, let me first explain to you what is the basic difference between global dimensions and shortcut dimensions so the first and the most basic difference between both of them is that the global dimensions are available as individual or dedicated fields on the transactions or journals and whenever these transactions are being posted at the time of creating the ledger entries these global dimensions would be available as individual fields on those ledger entries like we have the document number or the transaction type or the uh, quantity field or the number field for, for the item ledger entries so the global dimensions would be available as individual fields on all the types of ledger entries wherever the transaction uh, uh, is posted and uh, created the ledger entries and at the same time if it is a shortcut dimensions then they would not be available directly as a field but yes uh, those values are available um, uh, along with a set so there is a set or an identification defined and a storage is uh, defined in the system so through that storage through that identification in the system all the shortcut dimensions have been stored so whenever we want an identification of whatever the dimensions and the values that have been tagged along in in the transaction in our system so that can be available and can be viewed indirectly so there is an indirect reference along with the transactions that we create for the shortcut dimensions okay so that is the main difference between both of them now uh, the other difference is that global dimensions as i mentioned they are available as individual fields on the document itself or the journal itself while uh, uh, if i talk about a purchase document then the global dimensions would be available in the header and the shortcut dimensions will be available on the lines okay on the lines we uh, we have the dimensions available as columns like individual column fields that we have on the lines uh, the shortcut dimensions would be available there okay and uh, there is another type of uh, uh, dimension that is available in the system that is budget dimension so whenever we are creating a gl budget so while creating the gl budget we also have uh, a provision to define four different types of uh, uh, um, budget dimensions as well so this is the basic difference uh, uh, um, between the types of dimension and basically the global and shortcut dimensions now if you can go back to uh, the business central screen so uh, when we talk about the global dimension as i was explaining these dimensions are available as i mentioned as individual fields on the document so if you if you notice over here these two fields so these two fields are my global dimensions the department code and the customer group code so these are my global dimension if i go into the selection list and if i select the full list so this is the dimension value selection only right for the department so the global dimensions are available as individual fields on the header now for the shortcut dimensions as i mentioned these are available as columns on the line right so if i go further over here so let me show you these two fields now these two fields are uh, the global dimension as you already know right but when we are defining our uh, basic or default dimension in the system i'll show you it it can be uh, set up from the general ledger setup okay so on the general ledger setup we can define our global and shortcut dimensions so all the shortcut dimensions will be shown over here right 
and if you notice over here in the tooltip specifies the code for shortcut dimension one which is one of the two global dimension codes so this is signifying that okay we have two global dimensions in the system i'll show you in the general ledger setup let me go straight to the general ledger setup first so if i go to general ledger setup so in the dimension first step you need you notice over here these these are the total number of dimensions that can be defined as default dimensions okay so as i explained earlier total number of dimension and values can be created n number of dimensions or any number of dimensions unlimited dimensions okay but for default dimensions we can define in the system two global dimensions and rest of them would be the shortcut dimensions that is eight shortcut dimensions so in effect we have two default global dimensions and six shortcut dimensions because uh, the first two shortcut dimensions they are the global dimensions only so since it is uh, already created in the system and uh, tagged uh, with the general ledger setup in this uh, cronus database this is non editable but the shortcut dimension if i want to select a new shortcut dimension let's say a purchaser okay so i can define it over here uh, as a shortcut dimension now if i can go back to my example uh let me just go back and come again yeah so now you see over here system whenever we are creating uh, or tagging a new dimension on our general ledger setup system by default refreshes it okay so basically it's lo uh, it logs us out and uh, log in again now if it, i can go back to purchasing and purchase order uh, if we go back to our original example okay so as i explained the shortcut dimensions are available on lines so let's see if they are available okay so as you can see over here earlier it, it was department code and customer group code but as soon as i defined the purchaser code in our general ledger setup it is now available on our uh, line right so this is how shortcut dimensions are available so these two global dimensions are short, shortcut dimensions and this one is the uh, additional shortcut dimension that we have created now along with that we can all we can always define additional dimension values which are uh, even if they are not defined as default dimension in our general ledger setup but we can still define uh, along with the transaction so the first option as i uh, as i did earlier also we can go to the header in order action and in dimension and we can define over here all the relevant additional dimension values over here so now if you notice over here this sales campaign now this dimension is not defined as default uh, dimension in our general ledger setup so it is not available on the line but still it is defined along with the transaction right the sales campaign so this is how uh, we can define all the re relevant dimension and their values along with the transaction now how this value will be available and will be flown along with the uh, other ledger entries that, that is going to be posted with the transaction as i explained right so for that we have a dimension set id that is available okay so let me quickly show you how it works so if i go to lines and if i type over here dimension so the shortcut dimensions 1 and 2 will be available as individual fields because they are uh, uh, the global dimensions and the rest of the dimensions the rest of the dimensions will be 
stored along with this dimension set id so there is a dedicated uh, storage available with which uh, all the dimension values uh, will be stored and will be flown along with the transaction okay so uh, this is the basic of how uh, we can create the uh, we create the dimension and um, we can tag it the difference between the global and the shortcut dimensions right and uh, the third one that i was showing is the uh, budget dimension so if i go to gl budget so if you see over here we have we can define four budget dimension as well along with the uh, gl budgets if you want to define right so this is how the three types of uh, dimensions are there in the system so if anybody has any confusion regarding the dimension so this is the plain and simple uh, concept of uh, creating the dimension that is unlimited and defining the default dimension that is two global and um, uh, uh, six shortcut and uh, along with that uh, we can define the uh, budget dimension as well right okay um now if you can go back here uh the change of uh, global dimension let me show you quickly the process of how we can change the global dimension so we should go back to the general ledger setup only so on the general ledger setup we have this action available change global dimension but we should be very careful while using this global uh, change global dimension action because let's say for example system is using the business central application for uh, many years now okay and all the global dimensions have been tagged and flown to all the general ledger entries already uh, not only the general ledger entries all the ledger entries now if a company wants to change the global dimension let's say uh, before 5 years it was uh, uh, the requirement for the company to have the department or the customer group as a global dimension but now they need to define uh, their sales person as the global dimension let's say right or uh, maybe some uh, other dimension as a global dimension so we can definitely use this action and system will update all the relevant values that that is already there in the system Uh, not it is not that that new entries only will be affected after changing this value but even the historical data will also get changed along with this so we should be using or we should be um, as a consultant uh, whenever a client is asking for this kind of uh, changes uh, it it should be um, you know uh, uh, very we should be very careful uh, about suggesting this thing because it will take some time uh it will uh, uh, it will be an impact for uh, other users uh, uh, usual uh, or daily transactions as well and uh, at the same time it will change the historical data as well so whenever uh, instead of let's say for example uh, instead of customer group we are changing it to um, let's say a sales person code or a uh, sales campaign for example so the system will change the whole data in the system okay so with this action we can definitely do it but it is not advised and to be used with caution so that is one point uh, with related to what we have for our change global dimensions now the next point is default dimensions okay so uh, give, let me give you a brief on why we should have default dimensions so as i explained we can create dimensions and we can manually tag those dimensions uh, with our transaction but what if our clients uh, ask us that okay uh, for uh, every time i i should not be uh, selecting those dimension values okay so my uh, requirement is simple let's say for vendor 10000 i should be having a purchaser by default uh, uh, tagged as a dimension value whenever i am creating a purchase order okay so if that is the case then in that case how we can define it okay so we can go to the vendor so we can go to the vendor let's say for vendor number 10000 we need to uh, as uh, the requirement we, we need to define a 
default uh, dimension value so we can go to the when direction and in that we can go to dimensions so you can see over here there are three default values that have been assigned now if i want to have another value to be tagged let's say a purchaser needs to be uh, by default selected so i can select the purchaser and i can set the value let's say uh, marty horst so that needs to be selected as a default value so with this action the user will not have to select uh, the dimension value every time okay along with these two fields on this default dimension table or default dimension page we have two more values or two more fields that are um, important so uh, let me explain to you what is the use and how uh, how the system is uh, uh, using the validation against this uh, value posting action so this has been available uh, with the dimension uh, in the navigation as well and in the business central but this allowed value filter this is a new announcement introduced in the business central that came in uh, wave 1 2021 and uh, it was applicable from april 2021 to the general users okay so let me first explain what is the value posting okay so the value posting we have different options available so the blank blank signifies that uh, the value uh, of the dimension can be left blank when we are creating the transaction okay even if there is no value selected uh, along with the transaction that is okay then the second one is code mandatory okay so if we are selecting this code mandatory action then what system will identify that okay whenever we are creating a transaction with vendor number 10000 then area value must be selected okay so even if it is uh, uh, maybe it is not uh, the 70 value is not set as a uh, default value then in that case also we need to select at least one value while creating the transaction otherwise at the time of posting system will uh, give a validation that okay we need to select a dimension value for the area dimension okay so that is the significance of code mandatory now this fourth field allowed value filter that is associated with this value posting type code mandatory only okay so if i go and try to select uh, the option from here so if you notice the system is not allowing me to right so here now if i go to select now system will allow me to filter the values okay so in here we have uh, three fields uh, the dimension value code and name and here we can define whether some of the values are not allowed when we are create when we are selecting the area dimension for this particular um, for that particular vendor against which we are creating the transaction so this one is the additional filter now uh, if you uh, if you remember i just explained a few minutes back that on the dimension page itself we have a blocked field okay so if we want to restrict using that particular dimension itself we can use that blocked field but if you want to restrict a particular value while creating the trans creating a transaction and setting the value of dimension for a particular vendor then we can let's say disallow this value dimension number 30 so if we have disallowed this value and on the transaction if if we are selecting um, uh, the dimension value as 30 then at the time of posting the transaction system will uh, give us a validation that uh, uh, this uh, dimension value is not valid for uh, area dimension for this vendor right so uh, this is how allowed value filter you uh, is being used right uh, then the third option that is available is um, same code that is if i am selecting let's say for example uh, for a purchaser if i am using the same code and i have set a default value as mh that is marty horst so whenever i am creating a transaction for vendor number 10000 and i am selecting uh, on the transaction for the purchaser dimension if i am selecting marty host value instead uh, instead of marty host i am selecting let's say um, robin okay robin betancourt so at that time 
system will uh, again give us a validation that okay uh, this value is not allowed because we have selected the value posting type as same code similarly let's say uh, we have uh, all the different types of dimension and we can define it but uh, a salesperson let's say right and uh, i am selecting the value posting type as no code right so what system will have the validation over here is that whenever we are uh, trying to um, select a dimension value for the salesperson along with the transaction along with the purchase transaction for this vendor number 10000 then system will restrict because we have defined that there should not be a dimension uh, value associated for vendor number 10000 for the salesperson dimension because uh, you know it is um, kind of illogical as well because we are creating a purchase transaction and at the same time we are creating a purchaser and the salesperson as well so it is illogical too so based on that what we can do is that uh, we can just uh, select this uh, uh, salesperson dimension because this is a master data okay so we can we can create any type of uh, dimension and the value uh, along with uh, uh, in the system and to be used along with the transaction but to restrict some of them we can definitely do it by using the no code option uh, in the value posting type uh, when we are uh, defining the default dimension along with our uh, vendor or a customer or an item so this is i am creating an example of vendor only but this is available for um, all the different types of uh, um, the entity types that are available gl vendor customer all of them that are available in the system right so uh, that is that is uh, how we can define the default dimension um, along with our individual uh, um, uh, entities in the system okay now this is how we can define uh, the value for uh, a vendor entity now let's say for example uh, i want to define a single dimension to be associated at the same time for let's say my uh, 10 different items okay so how i can define let's say i want to define uh, uh, i have a, a dimension created called uh, um, I, item category for example right so i have uh, or a different uh, kind of an item attribute that is not uh, to be defined as an attribute with the items so that particular item or let's say a purchaser code i want to define to be assigned to my 10 different items so how i can do it okay so for that we can go to uh, items and let's say i am selecting uh, this uh, six items okay so i can go to uh, actions then from action i can go to item then in dimension and in the dimension we have this option of dimensions multiple so we have two options the first option is disabled over here dimension single because the dimension single is available whenever we are trying to set the default dimensions to an entity individually for one entity only but for multiple items if you want to um, associate the same value along, uh, uh, of dimension uh, at the same time we can use the uh, dimension multiple option so we can go to dimension multiple we can select new let's say i want to set uh, a purchaser for example and i want to set these uh, uh, terry dots right so this is uh, the rest of the all the validations and uh, uh, the other values are similar to what we can def uh, how we can define the default dimensions to uh, uh, individual entities so right now i am not going into value posting type and all but i am just uh, simply selecting this value purchaser and the uh, terry dots and i am pressing okay so uh, if you can go to 
the item and let's check if we have the value available. Uh, it is not showing me. Just a moment. It should be from the item. Taking a bit of time. Okay, if I go to item and uh, hold on. Related item and dimensions. So as I define the purchaser is tagged as a default dimension value. So similarly for all the six items, it has been defined simultaneously at the same time. So this is the concept of uh, defining the default dimensions. And uh, there is a concept called single and the multiple uh, default dimensions uh, uh, to be set up along with that uh, along with an entity. So that is the one that that is how we can define uh, our single and multiple value. So these two points I uh, already explained. Now the third one is uh, account type default dimension, um, but I believe uh, we are short of time. Uh, maybe Raz, uh, if you can just uh, let me know if we can uh, stretch for five ten minutes more, or uh, we should be concluding over here because um, since um, it is a bit of um, uh, uh, um, what we can say, uh, there are many things that can be explained with respect to dimensions, but whatever the basic information or basic uh, configurations that uh, we should be using while creating and uh, defining the dimensions that uh, I have uh, already explained. Um, additionally, I, uh, we can also define uh, the account type default dimension as well. Uh, so that I can explain to you in within five minutes, but beyond that, it will be difficult to complete. Thank you. So much. So I think we can stretch it for just maybe a maximum another five minutes, if if that's okay. Um, that's completely fine. Yeah. So um, what we can do, uh, we can just uh, uh, I can just explain the account type default dimension concept as well. So that is how uh, the people will know that okay, how we can at least define uh, uh, the steps. Uh, uh, on, uh, you know, to at least to have the basic availability of dimension across the system. So that is that would be the last point uh, of account type default dimension. So let me explain to you how it works. So basically, what is account type default dimension? So till now, what we what we saw is that uh, we we can define uh, the default dimension to our individual entities like vendor or customer or item, right? Similarly. If a company has a need that, okay, we do not want uh, the uh, dimension to be defined along with the individual entities, but we have the requirement that, okay, purchaser has to be uh, has to be tagged and selected at the time of creating any purchase order. Okay, so for that, what we can do, we can use the functionality of account type default dimensions. Okay, so uh, if I go to business central again, and I will go to dimensions. And I go to purchaser. And here is the action for defining the account type default dimension. Okay. So here, we can select for which type of entity we want to define the default dimension. So let's say I want to define for vendor. Okay. So I I, I am defining this uh, uh, this type of entity and will be defining the um, will be defining the sorry. It's taking a bit of time. Okay, so here we can select that. Okay, whenever 
any vendor uh, we we are creating um, a transaction with uh, we should be having our uh, let's say single purchaser code uh, to be assigned uh, it's to be terry dots okay so this we can define over here right and whenever we are creating any type of uh, any uh, any purchase orders right so on the purchase order we would be selecting the vendor right so whenever we are uh, even when we are creating a vendor as well so uh, it it happens that okay uh, we we have uh, uh, our 100 vendors uh, uh, created and our uh, uh, purchaser code was tagged to all those 100 vendors already uh, in in one go that we already did but what happens if new 10 or 15 or 20 vendors that come up new masters have been created and at the time of creating master if the creator or the user forgets to tag this uh, particular dimension to be associated with the vendor so to uh, to overcome this uh, hurdle or to avoid this situation what we can do we can simply uh, define the default dimension to be associated with the account type because this is an an entity so it is an account type in the system so whenever a new vendor would be created at the time of uh, creation of new vendor system will by default tag uh, the um, uh, purchaser dimension with the td value along with that vendor so the purchaser or the user does not need to uh, worry about whether uh, he or she will be uh, forgetting to uh, add the default dimension uh, uh, to that uh, uh, newly created vendor similarly we can uh, set the default value to all these different types of uh, uh, different types of account types in the system so the default dimensions can be tagged from this whole list now uh we have this whole list available over here i have uh, selected uh, um the list already yeah so this is the one account type default dimensions uh, um, availability on uh, which type of uh, um, entities in the system so these are all uh, uh, they have been available but uh, this last three these have been added recently with business central but rest of them were already there so uh, as and when based on the requirement if uh, there is a need and uh, an idea is uh, submitted to microsoft then they will also uh, look for any additional entities as well so uh, this is how we can define uh, the uh, default dimensions along with the individual entities as well as uh, the by selecting the account type default dimensions we are allowing the user to have the uh, the liberty to by default uh, getting tagged along with the newly created these types of uh, masters i would say okay so um uh, this is it for now because it's already 5 minutes thank over. you to uh, thank, thank yeah. you so much for that deep dive on um uh, on dimensions yeah. it was highly highly well received you covered a lot of content Um, it is a deep subject, um, so I have to exactly. give you a huge kudos. So, without further ado, can everyone give a huge round of applause? Deval, I was actually overly impressed with um, the amount of detail you went. Um, so, round of applause for Deval. You are definitely someone who's well entrenched in the community, um, sharing all your knowledge. So, I just want to say a huge kudos to you. I'm sure we'll see you in person very, very soon. Um, please don't forget to share your contact details on the chat. Um, um and yeah, sure. uh, for the community but, uh, to keep in touch with you uh, raj i'm afraid i do not have access to the chat i believe um, no problem i'm happy to do that on your behalf yeah thank um, you so much and uh, thank you so much for your kind words and if anybody has any questions still now till the default dimensions but uh, there are many other validations and other things uh, um, also uh, with respect to the dimensions but uh, in today's session we could cover only till this part so um basics we can start with uh, for the beginners let's say it's excellent session